All right, guys, today we're going to unbox and review the Analog Mega SG. Stay tuned to see what we think of this new take on the Sega Classic. What's up guys? Today we are going to review this analog Mega SG game console that we recently purchased. Now, I also purchased a Super NT recently. And the reason why I've decided to go forward with these consoles is just the, uh, the ease of using it. This has HDMI out that you can run into your game capture or you can run directly to your TV and be a little bit easier to use. And also the sound and video quality for these consoles is about the best case scenario you can get when using a modern TV. Having said that, that's why we decided to purchase this. Now, a couple things to note, this is still in the original packaging. And I purchased this not from Analog, but from Mercari. Mercari is an online website where you can buy and sell things to different people, similar to eBay, but I've never sold anything on Mercari. I've bought other items. I would assume that the fees to sell on there is less than eBay, but anyhow, that's where I got this. And the reason why I did that was because these are showing sold out on Analog's website. I wish they would change that a little bit from being sold out to what it really is, which is discontinued. I had reached out to Analog and, and I asked them, is it really sold out or are you guys no longer going to make this? And they confirmed in an email, no, they're no longer going to be making this console. So again, I wish they would just put discontinued instead of sold out, but it is what it is. If you want one of these, I recommend purchasing one sooner rather than later, whether it's used or still, still new. The reason why is because these things are going higher and higher in price and the longer you wait, the more you're going to pay. So take that into consideration. Here's what we've got. Here's the box. Looks pretty much identical as far as the box goes to the Super NT that we bought. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. So this comes in a matte black style finish, which is fine. It's just a cardboard box, very heavy. Uh, you'll notice we've got the sticker over here that's got some information on it. We've got 1080p HDMI FPGA unparalleled compatibility contents, analog mega SG, analog master system game cartridge adapter, HDMI cable, USB cable, and worldwide USB power supply, USA slash Japan. I wanted to go with the USA version, and uh, all that means is that the color scheme for the console is similar to the North American Sega Genesis. The other one, the Japanese one, I think there's a Japanese and maybe a European one, but they've got color schemes that match the uh, Sega Genesis or the Mega Drive that came out in those countries originally. So just for nostalgia, I wanted to go with the USA version because I had a Genesis when it came out. That was my favorite 16 bit home console, still is my favorite. And that's why I chose that. Let's open this thing up. Okay, so the console itself, similar in size and design to the Super NT we purchased. We'll peel off this protective plastic here. Okay, so now let's take a 
look inside the box here. We've got this little rubber mat and as you see here, spacer for Sega CD. So all this is for is to lay underneath this console if you're going to use the console to be connected to a Sega CD. It's just a spacer because I guess the housing of the analog is not deep enough to bring it up high enough to match up with that. You'd think instead of this, they would have just put a, um, a spacer underneath it attached to it, but I don't know, maybe there's some variances in the different Sega CD models, and that's why they just use this foam to give you the required height. Not sure, but anyhow, here it is. Also got this, which is probably the instructions, yes. Okay. Now inside the box here, we've got USB uh, cable for the power supply. It comes in here. I'll just so we've got the power supply, the USB, we've got an HDMI cable, and then we've got something that I'm very interested in here, which is this master system adapter. So the adapter, let's pull the plastic away. And let's see how this goes down into here. Now it fits very securely inside, that's good. Here's how it looks with the adapter inside. So this is so that you can play Sega Master System cartridges in this. So this is essentially running two consoles that comes in this box. We've got either the Genesis or the Master System. Now, what's very unique as well about this console is that they sell other adapters in a kit you can buy that has an adapter for Sega Game Gear and other, I think it's three different cartridges for different consoles that you can run in this which would be a total of five different consoles or handheld gaming systems that you can play in this console. So that's pretty slick, the way they did that. But I do like the way this looks. I'm just, just giving you a, an experience here of how this thing looks in person and feels in, in my hands. Well, first, let's look at this adapter. So this is a, it looks like a, some type of a clear acrylic they're using here, crystal clear, by the way. There's no haziness or anything to it. It looks very nice. This is very well made. So no, um, no complaints as far as the quality goes of this. It, all, it looks like it's very well done. As far as the console goes, we've got a, um, again, this is very similar to the Super NT housing. But we've got this circle here that's similar to the Sega Genesis that goes around. The color scheme of the red and white buttons down here. The buttons feel good. They're not mushy. We've got the doors on the top here that open up for the cartridge. Spring seems to work pretty good. If you recall in the original Genesis, you've got this ring and then it says high definition uh, graphics. Here we've got some different writing on here. It's, it's F, FPGA NTSC forward slash POW, A 48 kilohertz, or yeah, 48 kilohertz, 16 bit, uh, V 1080, 720, 480p HD. So again, just uh, it's a neat touch that they're trying to do to get this similar to that original Genesis or Mega Drive. In the front, if you were familiar with the original Genesis, there was a headphone port that came out the uh, front and then there was a little volume control. This doesn't have the volume control, but it does have the headphone jack here. It might be hard to see in the camera, but it also says right here, very small phones, and it's got a small picture of a set of headphones right next to it. You've got your two controller ports out the front, 
Over here on the side, it says analog. On the top, you've got the analog logo. Around the back, we've got, again, the analog logo with the name, HDMI port, and we've got our uh, port for our power. On the bottom, we've got a rubber area here. It's uh, some type of like a hard rubber to grab onto the, the counter or whatever you're setting it on a little better. Then on the bottom, we've got analog.co, designed in USA, forward slash UK, made in China, five volt, two amp, just some different things. Um, I do think, you know, for what it's worth here, this thing is very well made. And then two, if you see here, this is a little door for the Sega CD. So you pop this off and then this will plug right into that Sega CD. It's neat that they incorporated that. Now these, these will run a couple different things. You can put a traditional cartridge in it, just the, the regular cartridge, or you can use an EverDrive. What I'm not 100% sure about is we've got the Crix uh, EverDrive cartridges. We've got one for the Master System and one for the Genesis. So here in a minute, whenever we test this out, we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna test it out with the regular cartridges, and we're also going to test it out with both EverDrives. So that's the EverDrive from the Genesis and the EverDrive from the master system that we will be using this on. And I wanna see if it'll run both of those on this console. I don't know if it will or not, and I haven't seen anyone try that in videos. I've seen where they put a, just a regular cartridge into this, but I haven't seen if they've actually tried a master EverDrive cartridge from Crix or another manufacturer into this adapter and then into this console. So we will try that out and see if it works. So this is set up right now to, to run either wireless or corded controllers out the front. As far as the wireless goes, they on their website they have 8-bit 8 8-bit 8 do, 8-bit do, not 100% sure how to pronounce that. Let's just say 8-bit do. And they've got them listed as being, I guess you would say a I don't know if it's a preferred supplier or whatever to work with these. So we've got this controller here that we're going to use with this thing. And the way these work, if you've got an original console, which, which we do, you'll get this little plug-in here for the front. It's a receiver for the controller. Now this, this isn't included with the purchase of this. This is something that we bought but you've got this little adapter here. So you just plug this in, this receiver. This is the way it looks. And then it will connect to it. So I believe, at least what they say, is you don't actually have to have this for the controller to communicate with it. You can just connect this via Bluetooth to the, control, or to the console. However, I would, since this comes with this, it's pretty simple. I'd rather just plug this in and use this and be done with it. And as well, if you've got this and you've got a original console, you can plug this into the original console as well on that. Because obviously the original consoles weren't made with these wireless controllers. And on those, you can't just connect wirelessly unless maybe you do some type of a modification. But from the, just the standard console, you can't do that. So taking all that into consideration, here's what the controller would be and here's what the console would look like with the controller receiver installed. All right, so another neat thing here with this console is this SD card slot on the side for a couple reasons. One is it's, it, it's necessary because you need to go to the analog website and download the most recent firmware onto an SD card, plug it in here, you start it up, this light will blink for a little bit. Once it's done, it'll start up as normal. And then you can just pull out the SD card, you don't need it any longer. But it's important to go on there and get that most recent firmware update so that the system's running as best as it can. Along the way, they may find issues or something and they will fix it and, and issue that in the most recent firmware updates. I will put a link in the description for the instructions from Analog and the firmware link. Another thing to note with this port right here for the SD card is there has been 
what, what you would call a jailbreak firmware that has been created online, if you're interested in that sort of thing. And what that is, is where you can put a new firmware onto an SD card, as well as ROM files, plug it into here, and essentially play the games from that SD card directly without having to use an EverDrive or other things. Now that's got its pros and cons, like anything. I personally like the EverDrive cartridges simply because they've got save spots where you can save games and things. With this option, you're not going to have those save states that, uh, that, you, that the Crix cartridge will offer you. It's simply going to allow you to play the games, which that's okay if that's what you're looking for. It's, it's definitely a less expensive option than the Crix, but again, there are some functionality benefits of the Crix cartridge that this will not give you. So just to take it into consideration, but again, this uh, SD port is not only going to give you the option to give you the most, most updated firmware, but it'll allow you to do that jailbreak firmware if you would like. We're not going to do the jailbreak. I'm not really interested in that. I have no need to do that, but it's there. If you would like it, you can find it online if you look around a little bit. So that's it for our initial review of this. I will say that I'm happy with it. I think it's very well made of the plastic. Everything fills the way it should. So that's good. The next step here is we are going to plug this into our TV and we're going to test an original Genesis game, Master System game, and then we're going to test the EverDrive cartridges for both the Genesis and the Master System. See how everything works, go through everything with you guys, and go from there. And now, Meaningless Thoughts with Russ. You know how you eat chicken legs? What if the chicken ripped off your leg and ate it? This has been a presentation of Meaningless Thoughts with Russ. All right, so this is our main menu here. We've got a couple different options. We've got run cartridge, which I do have a original Sega Genesis cartridge installed in the console right now. We've got play ultra core, which I believe ultra core was an unreleased game for the original mega drive or Genesis settings and tools. So what we will do is we're going to play ultra core. And then once we get into the game, we're going to pause it. And we're going to go through our settings and tools so that you can see how everything looks as we change it with the game itself and not just this main menu here. I've got the 8-bit dough M30 2.4G wireless controller connected to our analog console. So let's start this cartridge up. I've never, or not the cartridge, let's play Ultra Core. See what this thing is. Okay, graphics look really good. Sounds really good. So what we're gonna do before we actually get into that, let's see if we can pull up our menu. So what I did was I've got a button on my controller here that's kind of a checkered heart. I clicked on that. And we are going to go into settings. And let's go, we'll just go down the, the menu here and see what all we got. So I'm using A as my confirm button and B is cancel. You can also see on the bottom left hand corner of the screen that this is the case there. Navigate up and down, confirm A, cancel B. Let's go into video, see what options we got. Resolution, we've got 480, 720, 1080. Right now this is on 1080, 60. I'm gonna leave it as is, I do not wanna change that. So just different options here depending on what you're wanting to do. Let's go back. Screen size, one to one, square pixels, four three for 16 by nine, 
four, three by four, 16 by 10, four X height, 4.5 height, five height. So, you know, it depends on your specific television, but you can change this to look however you would like it to look. We can play around with a couple options and see if it'll let us see it during this gameplay here. I'm not sure if it will or not. Let's try out square pixels. Okay. So that's just widening the screen a little bit. I don't know that I don't notice that it really looks any better or worse. Uh, four three four sixteen by ten. Let's see. Okay, again, it's just widening it up a little bit. I don't know that it looks better or worse. It's really just whatever you think looks good. And then down here, what do we got? Four times height. Okay, so this is this is going to keep whatever aspect you got up on the top and it's just going to change your your height to whatever you think it should be it was four five let's try five okay five it looks like five is cutting off just a hair from the top and the bottom of the screen not much on my particular television it's cutting off just um I don't know, just a very small bit. I don't think it would really make a difference if you're wanting to fill up your screen, you could do that. But uh, it is cutting a little bit off. If we go back to like it was 4.5, you can see the whole screen. And then if we take it back like it was originally to the 4.43, and so what's this one to one? I don't know about the one to one. Okay, so we're just gonna leave this as it was a moment ago whenever we first started playing this. Now let's go back. Scalers, so it's set to no scalers right now. Again, I'm not sure if it'll let us do it while we've got the game playing, but we'll see what it does. Okay, eh, we'll just leave that. Okay, so we've got two, three, four, scale two, scale three, x-ray, Oh, wow. I don't know why you would want to use X-Ray. Maybe if you're doing some type of a video where you're going to have change, a change in graphics or something just to make a different looking video. Otherwise, I don't have any idea why you would, what would be the point of X-Ray. DVI mode. Uh, so let's go back to no scaler. Let's turn this DVI mode off. And then disable H interception. I'm not sure what that does or that. Okay. I'm just going to leave it as it was on the no scaler. I think it looks really good right now. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're not going to mess with it. Let's go back. Scan lines. Some people like this, I guess. I'm not a fan of scan lines. I just, I think it looks better the way it is, but it's really just, depending on what you like and you know what works best for you. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. Normal scan lines, okay. Hybrid scan lines, okay. Oh, and this is where you can actually change the size of the scan line or the brightness. Like I said, I'm not a fan of scan lines either way, so we're just gonna go no scan lines. But the option's there if you wanna play around with it. Advanced mode, here we go. So we've started off with resolution. Oh no, I think I clicked on the wrong button. Okay, advanced mode, color, buffer, extra features, scan lines, let's see, extra features, mask top and bottom borders, mask left and right, enable cram dots. I don't know what that is. Enable dither blending. Well, okay, dither blending depth. Let's just see what would happen if we turn it up. Okay, so what this is essentially doing is blending in the pixels to try to get a smoother look as opposed to just a pixel look. I don't think it looks good. I prefer it just to look like it does originally, so we're turning that off.
we're just going to go out of here. Let me see. Yeah, I, I don't want anything to do with any of these. So we're just going to go out of that. Buffer mode. Fully buffered. Let's see. So you'll notice it says original speed, not tearing, but more lag. Zero delay. The system speed is adjusted to provide zero lag output. Single buffer. Some tearing, but lower lag and original speed. Let's just go to zero delay. Leave it the way it was. Don't need to mess with that. Color. Limit RB, RGB range. Lock gamma sliders together. Yeah, I'm not messing with any of that. Again, I think this looks pretty good as the way it is. DAC. RGB mode width and height. So this is something that on the Super NT that we bought from Analog, I changed it to be more of a widescreen. It really depends on what you like. I think it looks really good right now in the original format, the square style. But if you want to do the, the whole screen, what we can do is you'll see here, there's different options where we can change the width of the screen or you can change the position, the height, the vertical position. So let's change the height because it's not actually filling up the whole screen just to see, at least on our television. Let's see what it looks like here. So we'll go, okay, there's pretty much our full screen. Now let's go to width. And let's see, once we get this on the whole screen, what it looks like. And as you widen it up, you may end up needing to change the position as well. Okay, so we've got this all the way up. It doesn't completely fill up our screen, but it's pretty close. So let's change the height down a little bit and see if that lets us No. Okay, so we'll make it, let's take it back up a little bit more, fill up the screen like the way we had it. Okay. Looks like that's about as good as we're gonna get it as far as height and width goes. And this is just to show you guys, let me see. This is to show you guys what you can do with this. It's, like I said, it's really up to you of how you want this to look. If you want it to be formatted to fit a modern horizontal type TV, if you want it to be square, you do what you wanna do. So let's go back to the menu here and we're going to save our settings to match this so that it's got the wide format. Let me see. Actually what we're going to do is let's take this back to the factory defaults. Really defaults? Yes. Just to show you what everything's going to look like if it was original. So we'll give it the we'll give it the um, the try like that. One thing I do want to check though is let me see here. Okay, return. I want to see system and see about our hotkeys. Hotkeys and controllers. Okay, startup options. Startup options is if whenever you turn it on, if you want it to go directly into the cartridge or to this menu or however you want to do it. I'm just going to leave it with the menu as, as the way we've got it now. Hardware. LED options if you want to change the color of the LED to be something else. Let's just leave it alone for right now. So startup options, we've got boot sequence delay, not worried about that. Hotkeys, that's where we want to go. Okay. Menu hotkey. So we've got right, left, let me see. Down and start right now is the hotkey but on this 8-bit dough controller like i stated it's got a a little heart-shaped pixel button in the middle right that you can click and it'll take you directly into this menu which is pretty slick so we don't need to mess with any of that i just want to show it to you so now let's get into this game and uh, we'll test this thing out for a minute and see what we think about it ultra core all right let's see what we got Start it up. Again, this looks really good. 
sounds good. Okay, C is our jump, B is our bullets. You can hold it down or you can aim in a direction. Kind of like a Contra. So we've only got two buttons. We've got B and C right now that's doing anything. So let's see. I think I would rather have A as the jump. But uh, actually, let's pause this. Let's go back. Let me see if I can. Let's run a cartridge again. See if that works. Oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Play Ultra Core again. And then let's go to controls. Okay. Oh, it doesn't look like. So what do we got? Action is A, fire is B, jump C, X swap weapon Z is bomb well it doesn't look like we can change our controls let me see control with sound eh. so unfortunately I was hoping that we could we could reposition these controls a little bit but it doesn't appear that we can do that I was wanting to make this a my jump button and C the action I think that would be better because when this controller to hit the jump it's Kind of awkward. Anyhow, let's get back to the game, see what we got here. All right, so it's got this Contra feel to it. Like, uh, I don't know, it kind of looks like it's gonna be a mixture of maybe Contra and Metroid. I'm not sure yet, but it's definitely got a lot of inspiration from those two games. Just play it a little bit here and see what we think about it. I mean, everything looks really good. The sound is really clear. That's something also that we noticed on our Super NT. I mean, it's they've done a very good job with this console. Okay, what do I do here? Action, maybe? Okay, I just push down. Okay. All I'm doing is just holding the B button down the whole time and then shooting as I go. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's what we're doing. We've got a, a buddy down here that's in pretty bad shape, it looks like. Okay, am I supposed to get that? All right, let me see. All right, coin. What's that buddy here say, anything? No. So, we went past the door over here on the bottom. We'll go over here. So you just press down, oh boy. You just press down to, uh, to actually go. Okay. Can we continue to go down? Yes. Mm, before I go in there, we're gonna go over here. So that, this uh, everything controls really well here. Again, I, I think I would do the button layout a little differently. But as far as just the um, the gameplay and everything, it's, it all looks really well. So you press up to go through there. Okay, here's our coins. Again, I'm not sure what that does for us, but maybe it gets us. Maybe we can get some upgrades or something for some weapons if we've got money. Press up to take the elevator up. And then it will let you move when you're holding a button down. That's good. I, it'd be nice to have some type of a turbo button to keep you from having to hold the button down, but whatever. time okay so we've got a time limit here I don't know okay I see down at the bottom right we've got our time bar oh 
Man, all hell's breaking loose here. Okay. It seems to be a well-made game. The flow of everything's pretty good. I think, uh, you know, this is something you could definitely spend some time on and it'd be fun to play. It doesn't seem to be too hard one way or the other. Yellow card key, yeah. So this is, um, we'll just pause it here. This is, like I said, kind of a Metroid slash Contra style game, Metroidvania. And it's, uh, it looks like it's done very well. The graphics are good. The sound is clear what I would expect from a Genesis style game. So very well done. Now what we're gonna do, we've got just a generic Genesis game that I threw in there in the cartridge, but we're gonna turn it on just to see what the startup and everything's like. So you guys can experience that with us and get an idea of how this thing works if you're gonna put in an original Genesis cartridge. So we're gonna go back to our menu here and we're gonna click A to go into run cartridge See what happens. All right, so you see it, it booted up just like a, the game would, would normally if you had it in there. And you can change the way that the console boots up. You can make it to where it'll just automatically pull that cartridge up that you've got installed. If you do that, then you can, again, you can hit one of the hot keys, go to your menu, and then you can go through mess with your menu settings, or you can go into the Ultra Core game, or you can leave it like what we have right now, which is where when you turn it up, you just go into the analog menu. I think that's the way that I'm going to leave it, just so I've got the option to either go into the cartridge or play Ultra Core, whatever I want. It's not a big deal to click run cartridge for me anyways, so it really depends on what you want to do. But let's... Well, let's focus on right now is how vibrant the colors are on here. I think it looks really good. You know, this isn't uh, Sonic or anything like that. It's not a, not that this is a great game, but everything looks really good. All the pixels are very well defined. Again, the colors are very vibrant. The sound. The sound is good. So, yeah, I think this is, it's very well done, which I expected that. The Super NT is a very well-made console. Who do we want to be? Brazil, U.S., of course we're going to be the U.S. Let's go. Training session, mini Olympics, full Olympics, Olympic records. I have no idea. I don't know much about this game, so mini Olympics. Let's try it out here. We got archery. Let's do archery. Start. Okay. Uh, maybe I got to pick more than one. Okay. Menu. Uh, I'm not sure how this game works. So we got archery. If I press start, it takes me back to the main menu. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay, I see. Then we go to the bottom and hit start. Now I got it. Okay, I don't care about the name. Let's just start the game. Skill level. National. I can guess that's kind of standard. You got easy, standard, and hard. Okay, let's go. All right, so what are we doing here? I have no clue. I see on the top we've got this arrow. I don't know. Oh, okay. So I hit the R. Oh boy. Man, really don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, let's see. So I'm holding down R and trying to move the D-pad, but I'm not sure. Oh, geez. Okay, anyways, the point is, you can see it. It looks very good. It sounds pretty good. The cartridge is working just like it should. So, let's, uh, let's go back to the main menu. 
So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the console off and we are going to put the Crix Mega EverDrive Pro cartridge in that we've got and see how it boots up, how everything works with it installed. So we'll turn the console off. And I will say that these cartridges are very tight inside there. So just be careful when you're putting it in and taking it out. Okay, so we've got our Mega EverDrive Pro installed into the console. Let's turn it on. Now, obviously, we've got this set up, again, to go into our menu. So it's not going to be just going into the EverDrive. But when we get in here, we'll start it up and see what happens. All right, run cartridge. All right, here we are. So here is our Mega EverDrive Pro cartridge with our different games. So let's try Genesis and see how this... Gotta love Sonic. Let's keep it simple here. Go to Sonic, Hedgehog, what do we got, what do we got? Start game. All right, so if you're just seeing what I'm seeing, everything, all the colors, again, look very bright. The pixels themselves are well-defined. The sound's very clear. You know, one thing I've noticed on these consoles is the clarity of your audio, the highs, the lows, you know, on, on some of the old, older games, if you're, depending on TV and everything, but you can it can sound very distorted or staticky if you get to you know a certain range or kind of like a speaker is blown, but it sounds really clear with this. So let's let's play this game for a minute and see what we got here. All right. Oh yeah. So this this looks and sounds great. Just like it should. All right, so you've seen how this looks and sounds. Hey, I think it's great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off and we are going to insert a master system cartridge into the console and see what it looks like and go from there. Because if you remember, we've got that adapter that came with this to where we can play the master system cartridges. All right, so we've got our master system cartridge in the adapter that's then going into the console. The game we're going to be playing is Endura Racer. Let's see what we got here. Run cartridge. Okay, so this looks better than I think I've ever seen it look. It's interesting because you know we've got a master system here that's in pretty good shape but man, this looks and sounds way better than it ever did on that console, at least that I've ever played it on there. So we see how everything looks and sounds. Let's try to play it out. All right, oh yeah. Right, yeah, this is working great. It uh, sounds good, looks very good, very impressed with this. Now, you know, when I say sounds good, we gotta take into consideration that these things, the, 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 the cartridges, the game itself, they do not have the, they're not known for their sound. 
or their audio. But if, if we think of what it typically sounds like compared to what it does right now on this, this is a, this is a success in my opinion. So what we're going to do is, we see how this works, which is great. And, and also, another great thing about this is, what do we know that's a pain about the master system? To pause the thing, you got to walk over and hit the console. So we've got wireless controllers running this. We don't need to deal with a corded controller. Now you can use a Genesis controller on the master system. I don't know long term if that's a great idea or not, but you can do it. But anyhow, you've got wireless controllers to play the master system games and you can pause the game with your controller. You don't have to go over and hit the pause button on the console. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn this off again and we are going to insert our Crix Master EverDrive X7 cartridge and see if it'll play it. That's one thing that I'm very curious about. I don't know if these are set up to do that or not, but we're going to try it right now. All right, so we're back to the menu here for the console, and we've got our Master EverDrive X7 Crix cartridge installed into the adapter, which is then installed into the console itself. Is it gonna work? I don't know, let's see. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's see what one of these games will look like if we Go here, let me see. Let's go back. Let's see what we got. All right, man, I'll tell you, this looks pretty good. It sounds pretty good too. Now, we do still have the, you know, again, I think visually this is very good. We've got some of this, the audio problems that you originally had with this game, with, not game, but game system in general, where it sounds a little distorted at times. But for what it is, I think this is the best experience you can have with uh, Master System uh, games. And the fact that you can use one console to do both and get that kind of original feel. Now obviously there's emulation options out there. I'm not experiencing any lag on any of these games that we've been playing here. One thing I will note is prior to doing this, the way I was playing the Master System and the Genesis was I was using a Hyperkin HDMI adapter cable which works but there there is lag that I've noticed and to use that, you have to have a, um, let me pause this. To use that, you have to have a USB power cable that runs to that adapter. So not only do you have the actual cable itself, the HDMI that's going from the console to the TV, but you've also got to have a power run into that suit. So it means an extra power cable you got to plug in and uh, the cable itself that's got to run from the outlet to that cable. So it's just cables galore. This is just going to be your one HDMI directly from your console to your TV. Get rid of all that. It's zero lag. Again, you know, all these games we've played. We've now played the the game that's built into the cartridge Ultra Core. We played the Genesis cartridge. We played the EverDrive for the Genesis. Then we played a Master System cartridge and now the EverDrive for the Master System. Every one of those, I haven't experienced any lag. Best quality video and sound you can get out of any of those games, at least in my opinion, from my experience. So this is a win, in my opinion, across the board for this console. And the other adder for this is if you've got Game Gear games or other older, I believe it's the... SG-1000, um, the original Sega consoles, or those those Hue cards, the cards that you could put into the Master System. I don't think there was very many cards made 
but it's similar to the way the Turbo Graphics works where you plug in that card. If you've got any of those, there's an adapter that comes in that kit that you can play on this as well. So this is a very highly recommended system. I like the Super NT. I think they did a great job on that as well. I'm more of a Genesis guy, always have been. This is uh, better in my book, not because of the performance of it, but it's more flexible. You can play so many different platforms on this thing. I think that's a great idea. And also the fact now that if you want to get that jailbreak firmware and put it on there and be able to play ROMs off of that, that's, a, that's an adder too. So it's, it's just a very flexible system, best quality output that you can get in my opinion, and wirelessly be able to pause, play everything. It's a win. So now what we'll do is we'll shut this down. We're going to do a summary of everything that we've seen here today and go from there. All right, you guys, so there you have it. You've seen what we did with the unboxing and the review of the Analog Mega SG. Personally, this is the best experience I've ever had out of the Sega Genesis or the Master System. I think you would have the same experience if you tried it. Now, there are some things to take into consideration here. The, the main fact being that Analog is no longer going to produce these, which is a downer for sure. So that means if you want one of these, now is the time to buy it. Prices are only gonna keep escalating to the point to where you're going to talk yourself out of it. So if you're interested in this, then I would advise just to go ahead and buy one and be done with it. But in our opinion, I can't find anything at all wrong with this system. It's small, compact, does everything it's supposed to do, and comes with a lot of add-ons in case you want to play games from other systems. So until next time, keep gaming.